Hey, how y'all doing? Um, back again. Talk about my latest uh, video here. Is uh, we're gonna talk about the sun and the sun as food. The first food, well, maybe the second food outside of breathing, but uh, the sun, of course, being the source of life here on planet Earth. Sun, I look outside right now and I can see the sun shining, giving light to the world. Uh, but the trees, the grass, uh, definitely, you know, when we look at um, our food, one thing I like to recognize myself as is a sun foodist. So this not really only includes eating food that the sun has something to do with in terms of growing uh, the whole photosynthesis the whole you know food you know growing up as in fruits vegetables nuts seeds but um, also limiting the foods that grow down uh, like your root vegetables and things of that nature um, so you actually want to eat majority of your food growing up food that's <clears throat> got that sun energy however what about getting getting it uh, firsthand uh, from the sun um, again this is something you know in this in this world that we live in we live I call it I call you know modern humanity the modern day cavemen uh, because you know whether it's summer spring fall winter uh, we pretty much adjust to being indoors now we do get on a whole I would say that we definitely find time to get outdoors uh, in the summertime which is a great thing we really want to even in the winter time we really should make it a point to be outdoors as much as possible um, but uh, I just really wanted to touch on some points in terms of the heat, you know, the sun being like, uh, being, <clears throat> you know, for some people, again, you know, when you look at the sun, it's like something that's uncomfortable. You know, you see people walking around with umbrellas and it's really ridiculous. Of course, we know, we know the importance of vitamin D and really the one true source of a vitamin D is the sun uh, I can even share personally you know all the issues you know we, we, we know that vitamin D is, is, is critical for for, for uh, mineral absorption and the assimilation you know minerals we uh, especially calcium and I can I can tell you that I've had I, I, it's like for five years running, I'll have significant or at least noticeable tooth decay following winter. So it's something I'm trying to um, consistently work on. Uh, I, you know, I don't think anyone likes to lose their teeth, you know, or be a bone that's in the mouth. Um, so. But I also recognize that in the summertime, I don't have any issues. All my issues come like towards the end of the winter months where I probably got no sun at all, even though I'm outside, there's very little heat. So, so again, it shows you how important vitamin D is, how getting sun is, is so important to health. Um, but uh, I really wanted to focus, I mean, we're now, today is July 8th, and we're right in the mix, in the heart of the summer, you know, 90 degree temperatures, uh, again, coming from, back from the Bahamas, you know, it's loving the sun. And I really wanted to talk about the sun in terms of, um, in terms of making that connection with food, because there's a, uh, a direct, Correlation. In fact, I 
been meaning to make this video now for the last few weeks, but I'm going to read. I got a message um, from a YouTuber who I won't mention her name, but she basically, I'm all, let's see, I'll read this. It's like, I um, wanted to ask you a question if you could help me out. I'm asking because you seem to have a lot of information and understanding about fasting and food in general. In the beginning of last month, I felt a great desire to fast. So I stopped eating meat and my food intake for two weeks, mostly fruits and green smoothies. Honestly, I felt great and had lots of energy and alertness. The only downfall was that I became very sensitive to cold more than I usually would. I still would like to continue, but I feel like I'm doing something wrong. My question is that a normal reaction to the body with just to, is that a normal? My question is that is that a normal reaction to the body with just two weeks of fasting? It felt like I can feel every nerve in my body. Sounds a little weird, but true. Uh, this is this is this is what 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 I mean. She really. This is an example. She really was feeling her body for the first time. Um, you know, this is, you know, again, when you start to bring life and you start to bring fresh water in the form of, you know, fruits and vegetables, um, and you're not really doing much else or anything else, then it's like, again, your nerves wake up, you know, the light comes on. Um, the 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 mud <laughs> via mucus starts to eliminate or starts to lessen in the in the lymphatic system. So so this is critical because just like you know this is for me this this is this is something that's so frustrating. You know. Especially when, especially when you begin to fast. So when you be, you begin to fast, not only does the cold become uncomfortable, AC, um, the heat becomes comforting via the sun, and that actually feels like food. It feels, it feels nurturing. Uh, that sun, no matter how hot it is. That 90, 100 degree feels good. Uh, now, here's here's the question that some of you may be asking: uh, What about sunburn? Um. Now, I used to. I I know what sunburn feels like, but um, that was a long time ago for me. I I had to really think about that. When was the last time I felt sunburn? And nobody, I would like to think nobody, except if you were, you know, if you work outside, uh, nobody, you know, gets out in the sun more than than I do. Um, I definitely make full use of the summer months. I probably spend, I try to get maybe at least an hour per day, and where it's like, okay, I felt the sun. Uh, felt it on my body and it feels good um, so what's interesting is is that really sunburn if you look at if, 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 if you look at how the body works when you eat dead food your body creates mucus period uh, and I'm gonna even classic book Arnold Eretz Mucinless Diet Healing System. This is a game changer right here. This is one definitely a foundation paradigm book uh, for me and my philosophy. But when you read this book, he talks about he talks about well he talks about some number of things, some some controversial things that I won't necessarily go into. Uh, but this man is German. And uh, he is, uh, you know, Anglo-Saxon, and he talks about his, his, um, 
his opinion in terms of how the Anglo-Saxon or the white race evolved uh, from eating a heavy mucus diet. Now, that's not my, I don't necessarily share that view. Um, it, it logically makes sense, but he goes on to explain that eating a mucus a mucusless diet um, and getting lots of sun, he was often mistaken for being Indian. So, so the thing is, is that this is a good example. I'm a living example. I mean, this guy is dead, but I'm a, an example of, you know, of uh, you know, eating pretty much a mucus-free diet. <clears throat> regular fasting so very little mucus in my body and I can go out and get unlimited sun and not feel any sunburn um, so the thing is like what causes sunburn you know what causes sunburn is that again it's the mucus or the tox you know anytime we have now just 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 briefly on mucus, mucus is not a bad thing. Mucus is a great thing. Uh, it, it is our, it is the body's way of protecting itself against the bad food. And even there's some foods in a sun food diet that do create mucus. So you know our nut seeds, you know our 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 our, our grains, sprouted grains. So any of our heavier concentrated foods, our body's going to create some mucus. And this is a good thing. I mean, you know, it's all about balance. And if you eat, uh, you know, if you eat largely fruits and vegetables and you add, you know, um, some nuts and seeds, then that creates a good balance. You know, mucus, again, it's a good thing. So, but when we eat largely, I mean, if you, if you, if, if it's, if it's, I mean, it's, it's 1030, I actually haven't had anything cross my lips yet. And uh, I have my, my coconut water. So usually I break my fast. I break my fast um, with coconut water. Um, and actually, yesterday, usually Sundays are my day where I just do juice. You know, like probably 90, 95 percent of my intake on Sunday. That's my fasting day. And um, um, you know, that's a great. Great practice. <sighs> so that feels great. Feels great, and that really should be the ideal. Um, you know what you want to work to. No, no, but but if you it's if if it's like, you know, you wake up and you know and say, oh yeah, I'm have my oatmeal or. You know, some sort of bagel or waffle, or something real starchy, some, you know, vegan pancakes and just vegan waffles. This is like, that's, that's not, that's not healthy, period. Uh, soy sausages and all this craziness, um, that's going to clog the system. That's going to create mucus and the mucus is going to be in the blood and you're going to be just like any, any other any other diet, you're gonna you're gonna want to sit in your you know the whole purpose of AC is to keep toxins locked into your body. You know once you begin to sweat, then that becomes uncomfortable because the body is detoxifying. You know detoxif detoxification is usually uncomfortable. Um, you know even uh, sweating. Um, it takes a lot for me personally to break a sweat. Um, it would number one have to be very hot. I would have to be very active, but even in those situations, I usually don't. I rarely even break a sweat. Um, so again, you know, if it's if you sweat easily, that's again sweating is good. I actually like to sweat personally, but if you if you're breaking a sweat just by just going for a walk or maybe with some limited movement and it happened to be like 80 degrees then then that's 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 a sign that you're you're pretty you know you have a lot of toxic toxins in your body and your body's like using that as an opportunity to um, to detox so you actually you know you need to you need to bring on that sweat 
so, and of course, you know, if you're getting sunburn and you're getting consistent sunburn, this brings up the whole question of skin cancer. You know, and again, you know, it starts with sunburn because the body, I mean, the sun is burning the toxins on your skin. So that's what sunburn is. Sunburn is the skin is, you know, our skin is an eliminative organ, uh, organ, and it's probably one of the largest eliminative um, channels that the body uses. You know, so if you're breaking out in some sort of hives or, you know, rash or you know, you get especially with mucus. Mucus comes out through the through the skin, probably more than anything else um, via, you know, and and this is what uh, Arnold Eric talks about in his book. And how pretty much the root of all disease is mucus, um, and especially you know when we look at mucus on the skin. And if you're consistently out, like you know, trying to you know get a tan and this kind of thing, then and if you consistently you know if you if you live in that 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 party kind of lifestyle where you're you know drinking lots of alcohol and. Um, you know, eating just a lot of high stimulated foods that are very that are very mucus forming. Um, then yeah, you're gonna get a lot of sunburn. And this again, this eliminates the whole need for sunblock and sun <laughs> suntan lotion and all this like this this crazy crazy madness. Um, you want and then now I, I I think I just came across some information where they had some internal sunblock. You can take it in pill form. It's just, I mean, we we are we we are we are. This is this is a. I mean, we we're, we're like, oh, oh, oh. I mean, we're 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 the modern day Frankenstein. You know, it's like, I mean, we, you know, we put so much freaky substances in our body on our body. This is not how, you know, this is not how we were created. This is not what Mother Nature intended to, um, how, how she intended for us to live. So, again, you know, with continual burning of the skin via the toxins on the skin, via the sun, with the desire to get uh, a suntan, uh, because yeah, I mean, you know, when we get that with that sun kiss, you know, we we have that glow, we have that that shine, you know, and that's what the sun does for us. I mean, if it could do so much for food, imagine what it does for us, uh, right directly on the skin. It is food. It is nourishment, um, you know, and it's also, you know, I mean, you should also go into the practice of gazing right into the sun um, now sun gazing or the sun gazers you know the safe times are the times when the sun is just rising or just setting where it's not so intense and the, the, some of the rays that the sun emits is not damaging to the eye so I don't I don't uh, uh, actually and a friend of mine actually damaged her damaged her uh, eyes gazing right into the sun during the high hours uh, so I don't recommend that. Um, I, rec I but I do recommend just. I mean, it could be thirty seconds, like you know, just fixating your gaze right into the sun. Uh, you know, HRM. He's the uh, authority on sun gazing. I don't. I I believe he's in San Francisco. You can Google him, and he talks about. Um, you know, he he got the whole method down, and. There's a documentary called. Um, it's about sun gazing, and, and, and it shows how how um, there's a number of cases where the sun gazers actually begin to lose their appetite. You know, sun gazing every day. So the whole science is that when you gaze, when you look right into the sun, um, the sun stimulates the uh, pineal gland via the eyes. The eyes, there's a nerve that connects from the eye to the pineal gland which is stimulated and that, and that regulates all of the organs in the body. So 
if 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 you're getting that 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 food that nourishment via the eye into the pituitary gland that will actually let the body know that it's being fed and you don't have to actually eat the physical food um, the uh, fruits vegetables because that's just you're just eating a different form of sun energy of light energy okay so so again I just made this video just to give you some food for thought understanding that when you eat more sun food you actually have a desire to get sun directly on your body you know so so I make it a point to you know um, go swimming you know the beach is like the perfect perfect thing you got most of your body out uh, you know it's like this perfect balance between uh, heaven and earth you know heaven via the sun because the sun is a heavenly body so when we connect it to the sun we connect them with heaven um, you know we connect them with light you know and uh, and then of course the balance for heaven is earth you know or the opposite of heaven is earth so we connect with heaven that gives us a certain stimulation certain heat and then we connect you know if we're on the beach we get into the water and that brings that balance that 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 connection that 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 uh, union between male female yin yang hot cold it's like it's like that conception if you will that's the word I'm looking for you know um, the holy conception yes it's holy so um, so again you know it starts with you know this is how life is you know should be because this really brings on or really allows for you know not only good balance in terms of um, how our body works optimally like the like the sister who uh, sent me a message she said uh, it felt as though I could feel every nerve in my body and that's that's what it's about you know um, so so the thing is like for me as well I'll mention that you know so I'll mention a couple things that I like to do in the summertime. One is uh, hot yoga. Now, hot yoga is actually is obviously very popular. You know, we have Bikram hot yoga. We have other studios that heat up the room, so you know they do hot yoga. But I'm talking about hot yoga via the sun. And what's interesting as well is that now when I'm doing hot yoga outside, I'm not using a mat. Um, if you use a mat, uh, you know, the mat can get very hot via the sun. But what's interesting is that on the grass, the grass stays cool. No matter how hot the sun gets, the grass is cool. So you can touch the grass and it, it, it doesn't burn your feet or burn your body. And it also connects you with the earth. You know, again, like I said, you know, heaven... Or, or the sun being hot, the earth being cool, whether it's the grass, the ground, the ocean, the river, it's always cool no matter what. Uh, so this is the balance. This is it's important. This is this is the this is how um, when you when you allow your body to to experience that firsthand, then this this creates a nice balance. So. <clears throat> so I went through a number of things. Other things I like to do too, like I mentioned, is to go swimming, uh, go to the beach. But you know, living in a city, oftentimes, uh, I mean, I was in the beach of Bahamas, obviously. But um, even if it means going to the pool, you know, and swimming in chlorine water, I mean, you're still getting the vitamin D via the sun. Um, you're swimming, which is great exercise. Uh, so if you have to deal with chlorine, I just again, you know, you know, we live in a world. We have to make certain compromises. So 
if it means getting a little chlorine in my system via the, the, the pool water so be it um, but also uh, you know I have children so amusement park I love amusement parks I love roller coasters I love the water rides and, I, and, and it just gives you a great reason to be outside. I mean, it's interesting that if we're having fun, we find it tolerable to be outdoors like the whole day, which is, which is like the ideal. I mean, even myself, you know, with my business, I'm inside most of the day if I'm working like in the kitchen. Um, and then, you know, I envy those guys who you know, who are doing some type of like outdoor construction, um, who are, you know, whatever it may be, they're outside like all the time, you know, winter, spring, summer, fall, they're outdoors. I mean, these, these guys have a level of health because they're outside just for that simple fact alone. Um, again, you know, we've become the modern day caveman even especially in the summertime you know we're so dependent on AC uh, I don't have AC in my home I don't use AC in my car um, AC is just like what she said again you become very sensitive to it and you know really the summer month should be like a like a detox season uh, it should be a season where you get to sweat where you eat light um, I've been eating watermelon pretty much every day uh, even do a watermelon fast you know get get some nice if you can find seeded watermelon as I was telling someone yesterday uh, one of my customers I'd rather eat seeded conventional watermelon than organic seedless watermelon I mean that, that seedless watermelon doesn't taste like watermelon um, you know growing up you know watermelon was always big you, know, you had these big long watermelons, lots of seeds. You can eat the seeds. It's like great flavor, great source of fat, protein, with that combination of the red, nice sweet red flesh. It's like a great um, marriage, a great balance. Um, yeah, don't spit out the seeds. That's 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 nourishment. That's food. So, you know, eat watermelon. Be outside. Don't get sunburned. Get a nice glow on your skin. What's not to lose? Um, everything to gain. Winter time. Uh, we have to. F I'm still working on that. Still figuring that out. So, but enjoy the summer. Get outside. Go to amusement park. Go to the pool. Go to the beach. Go do some yoga in the grass. Um, and just enjoy it for a while it lasts. Um, so thanks again for tuning in um, have any questions you can post them below um, I'm always love your comments and your positive and negative feedback one love